Hey everyone. So today I got my haul from uh, Jerry's Artorama. Uh, Jerry's was nice enough to send me these uh, Lucas 1862 oil paints. <clears throat> so I'll be demoing these paints and reviewing them, letting you know how they feel. Uh, now I've tried their Berlin line, which is their water mixable oils. So <clears throat> I wanted to try their 1862. That's their professional um, line, their artist line. And you could also get the Lucas Studio, which is their student line paints. So here's what I got. I got some titanium white. I got all my usual colors. Um, now I've read up on their uh, on their titanium white. Now I heard this one of the best around and uh so they're nice enough to send me a big tube let's see what else they sent me okay there's sienna the cadmium red light of course burnt umber so they sent me a lot of the colors that i wanted what else? Now this is a cerulean blue, uh, alizarin crimson. So basically all my uh, cadmium, re cadmium red deep. Basically my uh, limited palette. So which is cool. And a few other colors in here. Ultramarine blue, excellent. Yellow ochre, rocking it. All right, that's nice. Uh, they have they show you on the labels whether it's uh, semi-transparent or not. It gives you the light facet rating, and so far it seems to be like a pretty good light fast rating. And let's see what else. Uh, some other info that I really have no use for in the back, but do have useful uh, info in the front. Oh, it does give you the pigment, which is good. It gives you the pigment number so for those of you like pretty nerdy about you know oil paints and want to know the exact pigment that's on there well there you go you have it in here so that's good now they sent me this these da vinci's they are double sided uh panels they're quarter inch thick and actually a little bit thicker than most panels but they're double sided so let's take a look and see what that's like. A little bit windy out here today. Whoop. Let's open one of these. Okay. Show you the panel, front and back. Now you won't see the difference here, but from what I'm feeling, this is like an ultra smooth, really smooth side. And this is like a semi smooth, which is actually pretty good. I think this would be the side that I would want to paint on. This seems more like maybe if you're um, multimedia, like in the crayons or markers or um, line drawings or charcoal drawings what at what have you uh you could use this very smooth side it looks like it would handle those types of media very well and i'm sure even like oil painters and even acrylic painters if you like they're very smooth uh and very detailed work the very smooth side would be like really helpful to your cause i mean i like smooth panels but not that smooth this is like really smooth almost like close to formica smooth not the same feel but just smooth like that now on this side on the other hand this feels like the panels that I make myself um, when I just on my panels uh, you can feel it's got a little bit more grip to it versus this side this is just slides easy this has a little bit more grip this would be best for I would say like any of your oil mediums acrylics casein or what have you 
all these other mediums and maybe even like oil pastels I would say and even pastels uh, let's throw that into the mix so uh, I'm gonna give these boards a test drive let me see I'm trying to flex it now apparently it's, it's uh, nice and gessoed on both sides so that will be a good thing because that will prevent warping in the future because the, the longer the boards are usually if you don't do both sides of the of the board if you don't uh, try and uh, gesso both sides then eventually you'll see like some kind of warping okay but because it's gessoed on both sides you it's uh you're relatively safe because as the paint dry both sides have equal tension on it and re uh, reducing the amount of warping if any at all so um let's give it a try see what we can do with this today so um like i said this was sent to me all by jerry's artorama and uh, i'm gonna do a little commission for them as well so let's get started and try this out so here we are we're about to start painting back here so just a little few fun facts about these Lucas 1862 um, paints. Okay. Now, they've been around for a long time. Think about close to 150 years. They have a lot of color choices. Now they have the Lucas Studio, which is your student brand. And then they have your uh, 1862. Now, the difference with these Lucas versus some other paint brands is that they use beeswax. All right, and also three different kind of dryers. Now these will, and the reason why they use beeswax is first of all, it gives a nice creamy consistency to the paint. And, uh, and the reason I know that is by using their Berlin line and they have beeswax as well. And it gives a creamy consistency, gives the, the whole paint a nice body. And also it has a nice even sheen throughout the whole uh, painting spectrum which is really nice now as far as the dryers from what I understand and from what I've researched there is they keep their uh, their recipe very secret which I guess I can understand because they have three different kind of dryers apparently in this tube it's almost like an alkyd paint like you remember you me using um, uh, I was using those uh, gambling fast mat which was an alkyd paint which you know it has the dryer already mixed into it but the difference the difference with the uh with these lucas is that the dryers all work in tandem meaning there's the dryer that will uh for the top layer of paint that will uh dry and as well they the bottom layers they all dry evenly all together at once so meaning they've engineered this so that when you paint, do a whole painting, regardless of all the colors, whatever, the painting within 24 hours will be dry. Uh, all layers will dry evenly. You could just, you know, touch, uh, it'll be dry, which is awesome, you know, to know that, you know, all your layers are dried at an even pace. And even if you put each color individually side by side, they will all dry within the same time period okay so they've engineered that you know each color like the yellows and the whites will take longer to dry so they've manufactured and engineered the the, the dryers inside so that they will dry at the same time as pretty much i said in ultramarine blue okay now what will vary is depending if you're using linseed oil with this to help slow down the drying times or if you're doing, using other paints with them to, uh, which will change the drying time. So let's say I use, you know, this with a different other paint, which you can mix these Lucas with other paints, they'll fit right in, but your drying time will change. Okay, so just remember that these individually will dry pretty much all at the same time and they dry really fast. Uh, for those of you, it, work, it works nice for me because I like paint that dry fast. I don't like to wait a week before I start putting in my second layer or five days or three days, what, what have you. So these will dry within the 12 to 24 hours. I would say more closest to the 12 hours. Uh, and I know that from the Berlin line. So 
I would not suggest putting a big gob of paint onto your palette because within a day or two, they will be dry, okay? Now, there's a trick. You can put oil paints, if you cover them, what have you, or if you have your own separate freezer, you can put oil paints in your freezer and they will last a long time, all right? Uh, because, you know, uh, I believe the coal just congeals the oils inside the paint and not letting air oxidize the paint. So they just last for a very long time. I'm not, I'm not a chemist. I don't know the technical aspect of this. Somebody might want to post this online, what have you. But I can tell you this, and I've tried it from experience, putting oil paint in the freezer and they've lasted me at least close to a month, if, if not more. So tried and true. Now, uh, I would think they would work for these as well. Even though that they have dryers in there, I would think they would work the same. I, I have not tried that. So anywho, so I wanna thank Jerry's Art Rama for sending me all the materials that I'm gonna be using today, except for the brushes. Um, they sent me the Lucas paints. All right, ta-da. Those Da Vinci panels, this is an 11 by 14 quarter inch panel. Adjusted on both sides, got a smooth and a semi-smooth side. So I'll be painting on the semi-smooth side today, okay? And uh, I'll be do doing a painting for them as well. So I don't know if I'll be able to get the whole painting done uh, in one sitting. I may have to do it in a two-part series. We'll see. But they dry fast, so we'll see how fast I'm able to apply a second layer of paint. It's like 85 degrees out here today. It's windy. Uh, we're going into the fall season down here in South Florida, so... Uh, let's give it a go, see what's up. All right. So, because of the size of the canvas, I won't be able to show you my palette, but I'll try and show you the mixing as I go along. Now, squeezing them out, it was really, really nice. They all come out non-oily. Now, the only exception was, for some reason, this raw sienna was a little bit melted inside for some reason. I don't know why, but no oil drips everything came out smoothly all nice and buttery same consistency except like i said this raw sienna for some reason i don't know what happened here uh, and here's my white so i got cad yellow yellow ochre alizarin crimson ultramarine blue raw sienna and burnt umber that's the only colors i'm going to be using today and uh, assortment of brushes Okay, some, most of it are all synthetics. So let's see what we can do here. I will be posting the, um, the reference photo that I'm using. So let me just start drawing out some of the shapes here, what I'm looking at. So I've got a little bit I've already drawn out, so. Just using some yellow ochre, give me a bit, a general sense of how things are going to go. It's going to be a tree here. Background. Some. Now, I am using a little bit of, this is not really linseed oil in here, it's basically Gamsol, 70% uh, Gamsol inside here that I made my own mix, 70% Gamsol and 30% linseed oil. <clears throat> so it just helps me, gonna help me move the paint a little bit. I mean, just out of, the, out of the tube, the paint already seemed to be moving pretty well, but I just, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna help speed up the drying time as well. It's going to be very, very impressionistic. I'm doing this so you can see approximately what I'm looking at here. Just draw basic shapes, tree here, and this one's probably just a little bit taller. All right.
All right, I think we're good. Let's ready to roll. All right, first, I'm probably gonna start with some uh, ultramarine blue. And now the consistency of this feels like, hmm, almost like painting with not whipped cream no more like well mixed peanut butter okay I would say it's well mixed peanut butter so I'm mixing ultramarine blue here white maybe a little bit of raw sienna Tone down this blue. That's good. It's laying on pretty good, so that's a good start. I'm using a number 10. This is a silver uh, Brislon. <clears throat> Got that at Jerry's Artorama as well. Nice brush. Good coverage, sliding on really good. What I like about this raw sienna, it's not overpowering. Just making a big mix so I don't have to keep mixing all the time. This actually feels really nice. It's going on nice and smoothly. So nice to be painting outside with the, especially hearing the sound of the birds and the palm tree, palm trees rustling. It's really nice. All right, let me introduce maybe a little bit of, oops, that was too much. transition color I hope you guys can see the colors really well a lot more white to this now you're probably wondering why I used yellow. One, to change a little bit of the color, and two, to make a nice muted transition uh, from one atmosphere to the other. Because, as you all know, the sky is not blue all the way down to the base, all the way down to the horizon, okay? It does have a transition. Maybe use a little bit of yellow ochre.
You're probably wondering why didn't I start with my darks, right? Typical question I get. It's okay. I will put in my darks in a few. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You don't always have to put in your darks first. Sometimes you want to put in your lights to see how darker your darkest are going to be and how much lighter your lights are going to be. So let's transition over to the trees. I'm going to go with uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of uh, burnt umber, a little bit of alizarin crimson. It's going to be more on the blue side. It's going to be a further distance, a distant tree there. Now I'm plopping this on, as you can see, pretty thinly, right? Because what's going to happen, I'm going to go back over this with probably a second coat. So let me just add a little bit of lizard crimson to that mix. Maybe a little bit of cad yellow. Make this muddy, dirty green. Just plop the paint on. Don't be worried about exactness. We'll take care of exactness later. I'm just putting on the approximate colors that I'm gonna encounter eventually. Same here. My approximate colors here, same thing. Yeah, there we go, ya la la la. All right. Put a little bit more lizard crimson and yellow. Maybe a little bit of more ultramarine blue and red. This is going to be for the darks at the base of the sawgrass. Let's introduce a little bit more blue. Give me a visual cue that there's going to be grasses up here. All right, so let's make that distant. Use some of this mix here. Maybe add more blue. As you go further in a distance, things tend to be a little bit more blue. It's gonna be like a bluish gray. That's not the final color, huh? This is just um, initial. Um, colors. That's about it. All right. Let's work on the water here. So white and it's going to be some dark. Whoa. 
Whoops. Got a lot of wind. Got a lot of wind. Test this blue out. Maybe add a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit more blue, tone it down. They're really creamy. I like them. I like the paint so far. It works out nice for me. All right. Let me see. Let's continue on with that mix. Using some of that dirty mix here, maybe make a little bit more. Just reflections. So these are basically the base color of what's to come. All right, let's start working on the trees. Ultramarine blue, lizard crimson, a little bit of burnt umber. Maybe a little, add a little bit of yellow to that mix, make it a nice brownish. So now, it's already starting to tack up just a little bit. It's not too much paint coming on my fingers. That's a good thing, right? So now let's start doing our mix. You guys know that Van Gogh now I introduced some cerulean blue here for some of my greens did you know that Van Gogh used to use these paints as well yeah he did 
Let's make some nice greens here. Maybe a little sienna. Like I said, it's going to be very impressionistic style. Add more ultramarine blue as I guess toward the bottom to uh, suggest we're more on a shadow side of things now. Now this might be a two-part course a painting session. We'll see. I'm going to try to get as much done as I oops, can in one sitting and then go back over certain areas. So let's see, I'm going to come in in a few minutes and start working a little bit more on the darks here. Let's take care of this side of the aisle over here. Uh, let's add more color on aisle 9 please. There we go, somewhere around here, there's some darks. Greens. Dark colors here as well. Just setting up some of the darks for later. So I'm just, just setting up my darks for later here what's to be darks at least and I'm going to work around these a little bit afterwards too
These are nice and creamy, I can tell you that. Some light trees here as well. This is the ugly stage, okay? So don't judge me. Not yet at least, wait till most of the painting is done. Sorry, I gotta hold it like this. A few darks down here. I'm barely using any medium to make this paint move here. I'm just letting you know that. Some red amongst these greens here. Darker values. Let's do for the tree some for the tree trunks. I'm using this dirty mud color. There was another tree right here. We'll give this more definition afterwards okay, let me add some of the darks here now I think I had enough time to probably set up just a little bit
Okay. Some of the grasses. Let's work on the grasses a little bit. And it's okay if it's mix mixing with the background. Just showing general direction of uh, Let's make some of the palm fronds here. Start out with a nice dark mix of colors. Notice how I'm handling the brush, okay? The strokes that I'm using. Now remember, I'm doing this a la prima, so in one sitting, or at least attempting to do it in one sitting. Not gonna be easy, but I'm gonna try and do it for you guys. Add more darks here and there. just the base of these root systems here. I'm using yellow ochre as opposed to yellow because of how opaque yellow ochre is. So Like I said, man, this is this is like really this is really loose. It's so hard to when you can't have the palette next to you to uh, demonstrate some of the color mixes. But I am willing to go through the struggles for you guys. Mixes here.
let's use this dirty mix back here. And notice I'm still even using a big brush here. All right. I'm going to be working all around because I'm letting some of these paints set up here and uh, set up here and there. So uh, let me see what I got in my bag of tricks here. Ooh, a fan brush. Yeah, let's use a fan brush. Let's use... <clears throat> I should have gotten some... Cad Yellow Light. This is more like a yellow... A medium, uh, a medium yellow here. So, let me add more yellow to this. Use the different size of your brush here. Introduce some of these blues and shadow. Nice thick and pasto. Now, I may go back over a little bit more with the darks, we'll see, but not for now. So, let's work on the grasses here a little bit. Let's go more on the yellow ochre side of things. Maybe a little bit of this cerulean here. Uh huh, just like that. Let's see. Let's see what I can do here.
Now I'm letting it mix <clears throat> with some of the background colors here and yes it does look muddy and that's fine because I'm fine with it because it's further away so it doesn't need to have that much saturation to it. I'm going to let that rest a little bit and go back over and make some darker areas here. So I'm going to start working on this general spot. So let's see. Uh, let's make... some tall grasses here and there. my brush get some fresh paint It's okay some of this paint lifts some of it I want it to lift it just mixes in with the background colors bring some of these colors down Move them out. So I'm going to go back to my initial sky color. Sculpt some of these trees. It's what you call sky holes. So let's start, all right, let me add some branches to those. Some, some darks here and there.
we're going to better define this tree a little bit more. some old dead branches. All I did was use yellow oak, and maybe I should use a little bit of alizarin crimson with that. Lots of white. Work a little bit more in the darks.
add some shadow line to this tree that was here. Add more colors to it. See what else we can do. See some palm fronds here. Sorry for all the wind here, but the reason I'm doing this outside is my kids are doing virtual learning because of this whole COVID mess. So I'm kind of forced to paint outside so the kids could concentrate on the schoolwork. I don't have a big house, so forgive me. I'm doing the best I can for you guys to show you some of the stuff here. Make some nice brownish colors. So I just basically added yellow ochre, crimson, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. Some of those loose branches out in the out in the wayside. Let's add some highlight to the trees here. Let's add some raw sienna. Maybe a little bit of blue. Give this a little bit more definition and color. added more drama to that tree quickly just don't take too much time to think just do just throw the colors on there Let's add some bits of sunshine here and there. Nice and softly. There we go. Just so some some uh, highlights. I 
I'm not sure if that bird is singing or is just criticizing my work, one of the two. There you go, some visual texture. Let's put some shine around here. Like the sun is glistening over the grass. Let's work on some of these trees here. I could tell you, man, this paint is like really nice and creamy. So let's add Some cool colors as we get towards the base. Let's even add some ultramarine blue for some of the darks. Sorry. Make a little bit of orange here. Some old foliage. Yeah, let's put some here too, might as well. Heck, you know what? Let's put some coming down here too. Why not? Right? Some blue, yellow. I should have taken, I should have ordered as well some CAD yellow light. That would have helped me lots here. I'm using 
thicker coats of paint here. Okay, and I'm not using any medium, just thick coats. Remember, even though these dry fast, I still would try to adhere to the thick over thin um, rule. Let's do some of this grass here. All right, just using my brush in a variety of ways here. There you go. I'm just using the really thin part of my brush and just like pushing upwards a little bit. Okay, let's put some darker ones in here too. All right, let's do that for the back over there too. He's like, well, let me give me some love too, brother. Show this water is not stagnant. Let me introduce some cerulean blue to this. Give some cool areas. Make some tree branches. Same here. Some in the back, some here. Visual texture. this. You know what, let me add some darker blues. I'm tempted to add some dark blues here. military helicopters here in the background let me add a tree in the background there I 
Let's put another one here somewhere. Another one here. Nothing to define. Ah, oh, heck, for what it's worth, let's do another one here too. What do you say, we add a bird? Yeah, let's add a bird. Let's add one here somewhere. Had a sharper brush here. You know, I want to add a little bit of darks here. And you had some cool I'm sorry I just used cerulean blue a little bit of yellow ochre make some greens here like you got these tree lines spilling into the water there you go like that Make some here too. Let me, <clears throat> let me just add some. Now that yellow is a little bit too warm for me, uh, but I'm working with what I have here to depict light. Let's add more.
cool blue. Now, I know I said um, the texture of these paints, I really love the texture. I mean, they're nice and buttery. I mean, seriously. I like it. it spreads on the canvas like really nicely because I'm used to paint with Windsor and Newton and uh, I mean it almost spreads like gambling tell you the truth it's really 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 nice but there's something different though I mean gambling spreads really nicely but there's something about this that as far as um, I can't I can't describe that buttery feel that I'm getting from these paints it's really enjoyable I don't know if it's like buttery gouache or I'm really trying to get to get to describing the sensation I have using these paints I think I'm going to start using them a little bit more often now that I got them uh, definitely going to incorporate them a lot of my work and uh, get some other colors too as well get some cooler yellows and maybe a little bit of phthalo blue from from them well let me see I think I'm kind of good for now. I don't know that I really want to. Mess around too much. Sorry. Well, well, wouldn't you know? Look at that. Kind of forgot about that. What do you guys think? I hope you guys liked it. This was like a really quick um, a la prima just to show you what these paints could do and uh, I went with the limited uh, color range here. So just to recap this was just like a, an impressionistic quick um, painting. I guess you want to call it almost plein air. Um, so I just got the masses in really quickly the approximate colors that I set in and then just went over it with uh, mid-tones and eventually to my highlights. Now, like I said, I was limited to the colors that I was using and that was by choice, not by error. Um, 
I just wanted to see how far I can push these paint as far as, you know, with the colors. Although the only thing I would change was the yellow. I probably would have wanted a cooler yellow. And as far as um, greens go, um, I think I would have benefited from a thalo blue on this painting. But nonetheless, I made it work. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any questions about the paint or want to know anything else about the techniques that were used or the, uh, the materials, leave them in the comments. Again, this was done for Jerry's Artorama. And I thank Jerry's Artorama for sending me these paints to try them out for them. And uh, so far, I like them. I like the spreadability of these paints. I like how well and smooth and buttery they are and how fast they dry because they're starting to set up uh, nicely for me, even though some parts were still wet, but still set up really nicely. So we're going to wait and see how long before this dries. Um, and I thank you all for joining me in this uh, video. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you again.